CBI, Content-Based Instruction, Basic Concepts. As we begin our eight-week journey towards better content-based instruction, CBI, practices, we should make sure that we have a shared understanding of the most basic terms and concepts. Content-Based Instruction and its Cousins The first term that we need to define is the term content. Within the field of language acquisition, the term content is used to describe any subject matter besides languages. This might be, for example, math, history, or science. In the context of this course, we are using the term content-based instruction, CBI, to describe classroom-based instruction where the content is taught in a language that the students are still in the process of learning. In our case, this is EFL. This American English e-teacher course was built with the assumption that most participants would teach CBI courses in which the language learning objectives were equally important as the content learning objectives. This is certainly not the case in all CBI courses. In fact, the term CBI has been used in some contexts to refer to classes whose primary goal was to teach the students a new language. Despite this, we use the term CBI in this course in the broader sense, described above. There are other CBI programs where the content learning objectives are the primary focus. This is true of many university classes where content experts teach about their area of expertise in EFL. A more specific term to refer to this kind of program is the term English Medium Instruction, or EMI. Another common term for referring to CBI programs is the term CLIL, or Content and Language Integrated Learning. CLIL is the term that is used more often in Europe. As we are defining CBI in this course, CLIL and CBI refer to the same thing. Language learning. Most EFL classes teach students new words to express things that they already know how to express in their first language. In CBI classes, by contrast, it is often not only the words that are new to our students, but also the concepts that they express. Additionally, we teach them to do new, more academic activities with language. When we teach students to debate, for example, or write a compare and contrast essay, we are asking them to express themselves in English in ways they have never done before. As it turns out, it is a lot easier to learn the language that you need to have a social conversation. Using language to perform academic tasks and communicate about academic subjects is much more difficult. The author who is known for identifying this difference is Jim Cummins. Cummins worked with immigrant children in the United States who were placed into content classes taught in English. Cummins noted that many children quickly mastered social interactions in English while still facing serious linguistic challenges at school for many more years. Cummins coined terms to describe these two kinds of language acquisition. BICS, Basic Interpersonal Communicative Skills, refers to conversational fluency in a language, while CALP, Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency, refers to students' ability to understand and express, in both oral and written modes, concepts and ideas that are relevant to success in school. While BICS can often develop fairly quickly, CALP is known to take between five and seven years to develop fully. 
Learning Content Learning new concepts and new language at the same time presents CBI students with a dual challenge. As teachers, we have to keep in mind that people can only think about so many things at once. Our working memory is limited. The term cognitive load refers to how much mental work a task requires. Cognitive load theory recommends that learning tasks be created so as not to overload learners' working memory. As CBI instructors, this means that we must be aware of which parts of our tasks are difficult, and we need to structure lessons so that students are always focused and able to achieve the objectives we put before them. One of the best ways to lighten the cognitive load of a learning task is to frame lessons within concepts and routines that are familiar to the students. As CBI teachers, we can facilitate our students' learning when we relate new lessons to ideas that students already comprehend, and we frame our activities in routines that students can settle into with little need for orientation. These familiar scripts, routines, or patterns are called schemata. We can see our schemata operating when we go to a restaurant. We know what a waiter is likely to ask us when he comes to our table, and this helps us know how to respond, even if we cannot hear the waiter very well. Familiar classroom routines serve a similar facilitating function for CBI students. Conclusion. This reading introduced you to several terms that you should become familiar with. Content, Content-Based Instruction, CBI, English Medium Instruction, EMI, Content and Language Integrated Learning, CLIL, Basic Interpersonal Communicative Skills, BICS, Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency, CALP, Cognitive Load, and Schemata. It also briefly discussed some applications of these ideas to lesson design. Here are the references used for this presentation. And here are some suggested further readings.